Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the Generate Thumbnails training. In this training, I'm going to show you how you can create thumbnails and generate those thumbnails from any type of a file, including PDF, Word, Excel, and of course pictures. All you have to do is simply add a specific folder. All the files in that folder are automatically going to generate those thumbnails and then simply refresh the thumbnails is going to show all those also a single click on that thumbnail is going to open up that application whatever it is pdf excel word or picture automatically we've got a lot to cover in this training so let's get started All right, thanks so much for joining me. We've got a lot to show you. I've got a record-breaking training today. We're gonna to show you something I've never taught before, how to create thumbnails from just about any type of file. That's gonna include Word, of course, Excel, PDF, pictures, and a few more. So we've got a lot to cover. And I wanna show you exactly how you do that. Thumbnails are really powerful because it shows a visual display of your application so you know what's in it, whether it's a PDF or whether it's an Excel file, they're going to open up automatically. All you got to do is click on them, so it's going to be really handy and helpful. So I wanted to show you just how we do that, so we're going to walk you through it, and I've wrapped it in this job manager. And that means so you can simply select on a specific job and all of the thumbnails and attachments for that job are going to show up. So we've got a, a pretty, a really good training today, something that is going to be powerful you can use in your applications before we get started just wanted to make sure that you have already subscribed to this channel if not go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and be sure to click the notifications icon bell that'll get you these announcements each and every Tuesday as I create these unique videos weekly just for you and if you do like this training I would appreciate your support there are so many ways you can support us one of the ways is a zip file with over 100 workbooks of my best workbooks in a single zip file it's just 37 in fact for this week or this month I'm going to have an extra 20 workbook bonus so you can pick that up also, if you do love creating applications and you want to learn how to create these applications to not only uh, define and design them, but in order to sell them, I'm going to take you through every step of the process in the mentorship program. And that's just starting out. So I would love for you to join us in there. And I'm going to show you how to define and design, develop and deploy your own Excel applications. In fact, right now I'm creating an amazing accounting application and walking you through every step and that of course includes invoicing inventory chart of accounts a full dashboard emails and notifications and tons more include sharing and sync features so you can learn how to share and sync your applications with anybody in the world and of course i'm going to wrap that all up into a really amazing licensing feature you can license your features and control those applications wherever they're sold in the world all right thanks so much i hope you'll join us i'll include the links down below that is the excel for freelancers mentorship program okay let's get started on this training again i've wrapped this in a uh, job manager and basically it's just some simple fields that i've added so that you can see instead of just showing you how we can develop these thumbnails i wanted to put it in the context of a real application so you can see why this might be helpful and how you can use it in your application so i've created basically we just have a few different jobs you can select a job number and that job is going to load we have customer start date job number just kind of basic i'm not going to go through everything it's a really basic form and i'll go through the basics of it but you get the idea we're going to put the focus on how to generate these thumbnails and then how to display them because that's really unique nothing i've taught before and i'm really excited to show that to you i put that to a post in our group our excel for freelancers and we had a, a little bit of a post where I did and I, over 200 people actually requested this feature so I want to make sure to bring that to you so basically the idea is users can add a specific file to any kind of a folder so if you add a file for example let's say we have a file here we want to add a picture onto that all we would have to do is add a file here to the Excel and it's going to create it and generate it automatically and then create that thumbnail and then add that thumbnail onto that. So we can add a single file. We can also add a whole entire folder. So if you want to add an entire folder, everything in that folder will be added to that specific job. And then we have up to 15. There are, we're going to store unlimited, but we can have up to 15 different attachments that are going to display 
And of course, we've got a little grid here of five by three, so it's gonna show five thumbnails. Just a single click will display that picture. It's very, very user-friendly. So I'd, there are so many ways we can use this. It's really nice to see if you have any kind of a project where you want your end user to see this. And it's really even this file, Excel file or PDF, really, really helpful. If, if you look at it, even in something like here's the test folder, and if we go to um, the view and we show like the extra large icon, even Windows cannot show Word files. Of course, they can show PDFs, but or, but they cannot show thumbnails for Excel. They cannot show thumbnails for Word, but our application does it. I'm going to teach you today, so I'm really excited. So let's get started. So you understand the concept. Here's the basically all of the attachments are stored on this little bit of a table, and basically we have job numbers. That's going to uh, differentiate the last job number I've added. So, and then when we load a job detail, as soon as we load it, what we're going to be doing is let's say we go to job two, we're going to be running an advanced filter. We've gone over advanced filters a lot, if you have seen them. And all we're going to do is use the criteria, load in only the attachments here, the attachments of the files, and then bring them into here. So that's basically all we're going to do. But the first thing we want to do is generate. And basically the idea with generating these thumbnails, it's actually not too difficult, but it does have to be done in the right order. So here's the order. One, we need to open up this application now, whether it's a PDF, whether it's Excel, or whether it's a Word or a picture, we need to open it up inside Excel. So that's the first part. Part one, open it up. So once it's open, what do I want to do then? I want to actually take a picture of it open in Excel. So we can do that actually with the picture tool. You know this tool right up here? You see that tool, picture tool? I can take a picture of any cell just you know, selecting cells and I can take a picture of it. So it's a really, really handy tool, the picture tool. So we can do that in Excel. So we've got the picture. So once we have the picture, then what I want to do is I want to size the picture accordingly in you know, like a small thumbnail. I don't want an actual size. So we're going to resize that picture. And then what I want to do is I want to save that picture as a specific name. So in a, we're going to include this thumbnail. Notice how these thumbnail names, they all have based on the job number. And then I've got the pick and then the thumbnail name. So I've kind of given it a distinct name. You notice these have three and these stars with one. So once I've created them and saved them. I want to put them in a specific folder so that I can recall them very easily. So we give them. So the process is open the application up, take a picture, update, modify that picture and make it a little bit smaller in a specific size, save the picture in a specific name and then bring it in. So we're going to go through that entire process. So let's get started. I, I can't wait to show that to you and then refresh thumbnails. We'll just refresh it in case. It, so let's get into the developer and see just how we did that. I'm going to go over just the basics of it. Now we have our job macros. I'm not going to go over this. You're feel free to download the application but all we're doing here in these macros is we're adding a new job we're saving a job we're loading the job they're very very basic canceling you know i didn't even add this button here <laughs> okay it's not too important but um and then I'm, i am going to go over this one load files because that's one's kind of integral so this one but these three they're very very common please download it you can feel you can see how how easy they are we're not going to focus on it it's not core to this application two we're going to generate this is the big macro that's going to generate all of the thumbnails and then we have our file macros and these are basically just two different macros one is going to add a single file it's going to add it where are we going to add it we're going to add it to of course to our job attachments here it's going to add it here and then the uh, second one is going to be add all the folders and this macro here is going to add all the files so let's go over this one real quick before we get into it so adding um, a single file is basically going to when i run it it's going to basically ask you for all files and you can add any type of file you want once it gets added it's we're going to set the object files and object right I will file system and object I'm going to set that and I want to set the object VBA create object scripting object this is going to help us work with the file that we added normally we don't need to add this but we add a file but there's something specific I want and to get that what do I want I want this right here this I want the type now there's many ways to get the type but I I wanted to find an easier way and so with this type I want to just get the type now we can extract the last four digits we can use uh, right and 
kind of find the dot. There's other ways, but there's another even easier way using the file system object. So I'll show you that. So with sheet four, because that's where we're going to be adding, sheet four is our job attachments. That's where we want to add them. We're going to set the item file to application. This is going to open up the file picker. Notice this is file picker because I'm only interested in one single file in this case. Select add a select a file to add. If negative one means they haven't selected anything, we're going to skip all that. Next thing I want to set the file path. That's a string, and we're going to set the file path because I need to know that's the entire file path. Next up, we are ready to add our all your information to the first available row, which would be the last row with a value here using column A plus one. That's going to get us our first available row. So we have our file row. Now we're ready to add all the information. And what do I need to add? Basically, I need to add the job number. Of course, the job number is going to come right here from H5. H5 is going to be our job number. What else do we want to add? We want to add the file name. I want to get that. I want to add the date and time that it was added. I want to add the type and I want to add the long file name. That's the path of the the application or the path of the picture or whatever it is, PDF, Excel. You see they're all different files. And then I want to add a, then I'm going to put a thumbnail, but this is not going to be added right away. This will be added after it's generated. So this is going to be left blank right away. And then I'm going to put the row in. I don't, I'm not using this right now, but I think in the future you might want to use it. So we added the row in. Why do we add in a row? Because if I make an update to this here and I want to know back what what row it was but we're really not using this feature i thought i might use it but it's okay something i can use in the future if it's there all right so basically we're going to add these fields using that so how do we do that well a of course is e3 that's the job uh, e3 or h5 they both contain the job number so that's fine either one now the b of course we want to be is the is the file the directory of the file path this is going to get the file name so we want the file name current date and time is now current date and time so we have that and I also here's the cool thing I want to get the extension now I can use the object FSO get extension name that's very very cool of the file path this right here is going to extract the extension name that's why I use the file system object then of course in E I want the full file path and then row which we're not really using so this is let's just put this down there full file path and of course, this is the extension name. We can add that to extension. Okay, so that's basically all we do. And we're going to pretty much do the same thing for the add file, add all files. Now, this is the macro that's been attached to this particular button here. So we have add a single file, which we just went over. And then we have, I didn't even add any functionality to remove the file. I'll add that later on. Or you can add it, <laughs> but that's not necessarily too important. But basically, so if we want to remove the file, we're going to need the row, right? So if we put the row right here, I'm going to know what, when I click remove, I didn't add a macro to this, but you can. If you put it here, you know what row to remove. All you need to do is go into the attachments and remove and delete that row here. So as long as you bring the row over here, we can do that. I just didn't get to that yet, been so busy. All right, so add the entire folder is what we're gonna focus on the macro right now. That's the macro. So basically what we need to do is go through every single file in that folder and add all the details. Pretty much the same thing that we just did except we're gonna loop through all the files. So again, we're adding all the information like we just added except we're running it in a loop for each object in the file folder again this time we're going to run a loop we can use this for each and that's going to loop through every single file and folder there's no filters that means every type of file gets added so again we're adding the name we're adding the current date and time we're adding the extension and the file path so we have that the last thing is i want to generate the thumbnails we're going to run that macro now in a minute i'm going to go through that macro that is the macro that's going to generate all of our thumbnails okay so we understand now uh, with these two macros how we get all this data in here that's important remember but not in f right f is something that we're going to add in inside the generate thumbnails so we added everything but this this doesn't exist and why is that because i want to use a separate macro to generate the thumbnails and i want to know i don't want to duplicate the same thing again and again as long as there's a file here i know that the thumbnail's been generating if it's missing it needs to generate it so that's that's how we're going to differentiate we just need to go through this table we need to check if f and the 
row is missing, if it's missing a thumbnail, then we need to generate it. And we can do that generating with a macro. So let's go into the macro. That's the heart of this application and see just how we generate those thumbnails. So in the generate thumbnails macro, it's basically one single macro. It's not too big. So I want to go over that with you. So the first thing we want to do is we need to dimension the full file path. I need to know the full file path of that file. I also need to know the file type because we're going to generate thumbnails differently based on certain files. Word, Excel, and PDF are going to be generated one way. Picture files are going to be generated another way. So we need to differentiate those based on the file type. So we need to dimension that. Also, the picture path. Remember, we have the full file path. That's for the file. And then I also want the picture, the path of that picture. What is the path of that picture? Well, that's going to be stored in a full. I just used a temporary folder and I used, uh, I believe it was thumbnails. So what we did is we here's here's the here's the application folder right that's where generate thumbnails that so what I did is I used the macro to create a brand new folder if it doesn't exist called thumbnails and all those thumbnails these are all picture files are stored in here so we know where to pull it from so that we're gonna use the application the Excel application whatever folder that is stored in that's gonna be the default folder because it's the easiest to use because we know the workbook must be stored somewhere so we might as well just use that you of course you can update your application to store them anywhere you want so basically what we're gonna do in the macros we're gonna look for this folder if it doesn't exist we're gonna create it and if it does exist this is where we're gonna be adding the pictures these thumbnail pictures that we create they're all gonna be added here all right, so if we just look on a picture, they're just small. I didn't create very big ones because I don't want them to take up too much time. You can create whatever size you want. But basically, if you see, they're, they're not very intense. They're, they're small files. They're not very detailed, and they're, they're very lightweight, which is really what I wanted. I wanted a lightweight picture. So if we see this, this picture is only 5 kilobytes. They're very small, which is really what I want, small and lightweight thumbnails user can single click. All right, so we know we understand the picture path and we need to know the name of the file. So both of those things are important. Then of course, we're going to be working with the file system object. So I need to define the file object and the file system object as objects. That's going to be late binding means we're just defining them as objects early on. And then later on, we're going to define as what they actually are. We're going to be working through the file rows. We're going to be going all the way through the file rows here, right? So I need to always keep track of what row we're on. That's going to be file row. So we're going to dimension that as long. Also, the job number. Job is going to be long. We all want to put the job number, and it's long. It's always going to be a number. And then the last row. If I'm going to be looping through these, and I'm going to need to know the last row. So we can do that. First of all, with sheet three, oh, let's go over the picture object chart as an object. We're going to be creating a chart. Why are we creating a chart? Because that's the only way we can save a picture. When we Let's say we have a chart, just an empty chart. We take a picture, we can paste it onto that chart. Then we can save the chart as a picture. There's no way to directly save a picture, have a picture in Excel, and then just save that picture as a separate file. The only way to do that is using a chart object. So we need to create the chart object put the picture in there, save the chart object as a picture, and then delete the chart object. So we're going to do that, and I'll walk you through that. And then the picture shape is shape. The first thing I want to do, this is our generate thumbnails. We have a specific sheet that's going to generate thumbnails. And all I did was increase A column very wide, and I put about 10 rows. So all this is just a blank sheet with some, I've spat the column as long, because that's the width of the when we generate the pictures, that is the width. So we want to go over that and we want to make sure it's set at a specific width and a specific length so that when we create our generate our thumbnails, they also have a specific height and width. Unless they're pictures and then the pictures pictures may be longer. I don't want to change the aspect ratio on those. So pictures might be different. All right, so with sheet three, the first thing I want to do is just in case there's any pictures that are uh, remaining on that sheet from the last generator, I want to remove those. So I don't want any shapes in this sheet at all none so we're gonna for each picture shape in shapes wide dot shapes because we've already specified sheet three here make sure if you do that when you delete every single shape make sure you're on the right sheet you don't want to do that on a sheet like this it's going to delete everything so be careful you're on the right sheet i've made that mistake before make sure you specify the right sheet you're not deleting all of the shapes in the wrong sheet we want to delete all of the shapes in the thumbnail generator sheet which is this one sheet three right here all right next up so i want to then I'll, once i've done that once i've got looped through all the pictures and made sure they're all 
deleted. I need to get the last row in sheet four. Sheet four is our job attachments, right? We need to loop through all the attachments in case there's any thumbnails that have not been generated, we want to generate them. So the first thing we want to do is get the last row. And if the last row was less than three, then exit the sub, right? That would basically mean if there's no data in here, if the last row is less than three, there's no data, there's nothing to do. We can't generate uh, thumbnails based on no attachments, no jobs. So we want to make sure we uh, get an out in case there's no data. We can't, it's going to create errors if we don't get out of that. Okay, I want to activate sheet three, at least temporarily while we're generating those. And then I want to set the FSO object to create object scripting file system object. We've used this in the past with our file manager, and this is going to be helpful when we want to work with it. So we need to set that up. And also, I want to make sure, I guess this is probably not necessary beginning, but just in case there's we create thumbnail pictures, we've already deleted it. This probably wouldn't be necessary at this. I can remove this because we've already deleted all the shapes here, so there would be. But we do want to make sure that we delete all the shapes as we create them. We create them, we use them, and then we delete them. Okay. For the file row, we're going to keep track of the file, three, three to the last row. We want to loop starting at three, going to the last row. In this case, it would be 31. So that's going to be our beginning loop. And then what I want to do is the first thing I want to check if F and the file row value does not equal empty, then go to the next row. Why is that? Because I'm only focused on generating thumbnails. If they've already been generated here, it's going to skip it. So if this contains a value, it's going to skip everything and go to the next. And how do we skip it? Well, we're going to look for next row. And where is that? It's all the way down here right before our next which is right here, next row. So then we're ready for the next file row. It's just gonna skip all that because there's nothing to add. So next up, assuming that it is blank, that means we do need to. First thing I wanna do is I want to, we don't need this here. The first thing I want to do is set the job number at sheet four, a and the file row set the job number that's in column a the next i want to know the full file path of the application whatever it is whatever the file is whether it's pdf or picture i need to get the full file path i also need to know what type it is and i need to know the name of it again the name of it in this case is going to be the i want the base file name what is the base file name and that is basically the name without the extension oh, that's all i want so we're going to use fso object get base name that means the name of the file without the file extension because that's going to be helpful i want to name it why do i want why is that important because when i when i name it when i rename the thumbnail i want to name it put the same name in here but I want to add the job number. I want to add the word PIC, pick. Then I want to add the original name without the extension. And then I want to add JPG. Of course, it's a JPEG file. They're all JPEG files. So I need that name. So that's important. So we need to extract that without the extension. I don't want the extension. Okay, first, our first check, I want to check if it's an Excel file or if it's a Word file or if it's a PDF file or a text. My, my um, test with text files didn't work out so well. It just showed an icon. So get rid of that. So it didn't really work very well with text. It showed an icon. It didn't have an error, but it just showed. I wanted to show the text file, but it didn't open. Maybe there's another way to open a text file inside of Excel, but otherwise it's okay. So we're going to focus on any type of Excel file, any type of Word doc, DLC, or any type of PDF. Now, of course, Excel file could come in XLSM, XLSB, XLSX. So there's so many. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the in string command of the file type, the file type we've already defined here. And so we're going to base it on here. So you see uh, XLSX, it could be, so it could be XLS, but we know that the base is XLS. That means it would have to include XLS. We could actually use XL for others, but we want to make sure that it's at least XL. So if, if this XLS is found in the extension if it's found there then we know it's an excel file or if doc maybe it's a word docx or maybe one of the other word extensions if it's that if it's a string it's also found or if it's a pdf right so in cases any of those three if it's found greater than zero means it, it's found that text is found in there then what i want to do i want to select a1 a1 is where we're going to be placing it so we want to make sure then I'm going to create an object. Why do I want to create an object? An object is a great way to display a specific 
pause specific application let's pause that code here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete let's take a look at the docx let's i'm going to de delete this thumbnail so that it gets recreated and i can run the macro and show you where we are so let's run the macro and i'll take a look in now it's running it's stopped and let's take a look in the application now this is actually a word document and it's embedded word document inside so you see a1 it's already embedded this is based on the object file that's the name that i've given it to it and so what i'm going to do in the future in the next few lines of code is i'm going to take a picture of this and now let's do it with an excel file so you can see the difference let's put that up okay so now it's been added again and i want to do that with an excel file so we can see what it would look like this is an excel file the job estimate so i'm going to delete the thumbnail so that when we run the code it automatically runs and it stops for an excel so i'm going to i'm going to pause it actually right here so we see we're creating an object we're giving it a file name and we're using the full file path so it knows whether it's excel pdf we're going to open it inside excel we don't need a link and we don't want to display it as an icon we actually want to display the whole and we're giving it a specific name i need to give it a specific name so i can work with it so it's got to have a name object file we can call it any name but we've chosen object file so when i run this code it's now going to open up an excel file and of course it's going to stop it right here because i want to pause it so now we see we've got an excel file this job that this is actually an excel file embedded inside our application and it's also taken up a certain amount of space so we understand that we're opening the file using the object regardless of the file whether it's word pdf or of course picture or of course excel okay so we can continue on with the code and let that create now now that's done we can stop it so we understand now that regardless of the type of file as far as document word document pdf or excel it's going to open it up using this object next up what i want to do well in in cases of excel xls there's going to open up multiple workbooks and see like this workbook is still open i really need to be able to close that on some occasions so this code helps close that usually but not always i think this workbook's one maybe i'll have change it to one or two or three depending upon this number here could be some issues with that based on the number but basically when you close it it doesn't close entirely you see it's still open there but it's it's actually not open on my desktop it's opening the code all right so this code helps close the secondary helps but obviously doesn't work okay next up with this shapes object file what do i want to do remember we've created an object file now we have it but now we need to work with it Okay, so what do we want to do? I want to set the left up in the top. Make sure it's in the top left corner. That's important. So I want to make sure it's set. And I want to give it a very specific width. 586 in this case, which is pretty much the column A1. If we look here, there's nothing here now because it's been finished the macro. But it's basically here, which is 581. It's going to be the entire width of column A. I want to set that major specific i didn't set height i just left the height as to whatever it was for these types of files which is fine you might want to set a height but i left it out i commented it out because we're okay with just the width i don't want to change the aspect ratio of the whether it's a word document or excel i want to keep i just want to set the width for this the heights are okay all right next up what i want to do is i want to take a picture remember i described i want to take a picture of this and then the file and the cells that i'm going to take a picture of as long as it's embedded in a specific cells or range of cells i can take a picture of those range of cells and I'm actually going to take a picture of whatever is there this line of code will do just that range a1 through a10 copy picture that's going to actually copy the picture do events is going to make sure that it continues regardless and then we're going to paste the picture once we paste it so now we basically have a, an object that is your actual application and we have a picture of it so we have those two things next up now we're ready to work with it so we have a picture so let's take a look up to this point and i'm going to run it one more time so you can see where we are again to do that we need to actually delete uh let's go ahead and delete one because it's been created it's going to run it just to make sure that it runs and we'll go ahead and run the code up to this point all right and now that we're at this point we've actually copied the picture and we've pasted it so if we take a look at what we have we'll see we have now picture 23 it's this picture and behind it is our actual objects we have two things we have the object file behind it and we have the picture so in the next few lines of code basically what i want to do is i want to resize this picture i want to place it right up here something like this so okay of course we're going to do it in vba but i want to place another picture right about c1 i want to take this picture i want to place it right up here that's what we're going to do in the next few lines of code so let's go through that in fact let's just go 
ahead and bring this code across and so we can see exactly what's going on as we're going through the code. So we're going to slide that over a little bit to the left so we can see and then I'll bring the code in so that you can we can follow along with the code using F8 we'll step right through it. Okay I'll bring it here and now you can see what's going on and scrolling up here we can see so basically what I want to do now is I want to assign it a specific name thumbnail because once it has a name I can work with it right now it's called picture 23 but I want to assign it a name so as we step through F8 it's gonna now assign the name so if we see now it's assigned a name see now it's got thumbnail pick thumb pick it's now been assigned a name so what do I want to do now now what I want to do is I want to assign it a specific position based on C1 so it's gonna move over I actually manually moved it over but it's gonna move it over to C1 and then it's gonna set a specific formula I want to make sure that formula is based on whatever is in a1 through a10 so now we have a formula that's been assigned and now we're gonna get a specific width 100 and it's a little bit bigger than my manual size so we have a specific width next up we're gonna set the application screen updating and calculate make sure we calculate because that's gonna run that's actually gonna update any type of a picture because if we don't run that calculation automatically it may show an older picture calculate is very important because we have a, actually a formula based on that all right now if it's a picture type of course it's not okay so we're gonna skip through that next up what do we want to do I want to select this it's already selected and I'm gonna copy that why am I copying it because once I create an object I want to then paste it inside this object let's try to move this over so you can see it I'm gonna bring it over all right so now I want to create an object so set an object art equals the active sheet 200 by 200 that's just the left or the placement that's the placement and then what do I want to do I want to set up create an object create a chart but I want to create the chart the width and height based exactly on the width and the height of this picture right here creating a brand new chart based exactly on the width and the height of the picture so we can do that based on this the shape the width of that chart is going to be the shapes thumbnail picture width and the height of course is going to be based on the height of the thumbnail picture so now we have a chart created if we tab over that we have now a chart created and here's our chart right here there it is right here we now have a chart created that is the exact size of our thumbnail okay good so we're gonna activate the chart and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paste in that line as soon as we paste in it's gonna take that picture that we just created and it's gonna paste it right in this chart here so we see it's pasted in there now we're ready now we're ready to set the picture path the picture path and what is the picture path that is the path of the final picture where that thumbnail is going to go again remember i said this workbook we're going to put that folder in there we're going to create a folder called thumbnails if it's not there yet and we're going to place it we're going to set a picture name what is the name it's going to be the job number it's going to be the underscore the word pick then the underscore again and then the original file name remember this original file name doesn't have the let me move it over here this original file name doesn't have the extension so it's just the file name and then JPG because that's the file type it's going to be okay so we see that now the next step so we've set our picture now I need to make sure that that folder exists remember we're placing it in a folder called thumbnails but what if it doesn't exist well if it doesn't exist I have to create it we can do it with this line of code if the directory workbook path and backslash thumbnails vb equals blank that means it doesn't exist and i need to make a directory mk directory will do just that so mk direct this workbook path backslash thumbnails will create a folder if it doesn't exist so now i have a folder there in case it now i have a folder and i know where to put it all right next up with the next line of code let's f8 through this so now we've created a directory it's already been created though next up I want to make sure that that picture doesn't exist if that same picture exists in the same folder it's gonna create an error I can't so I want to delete the picture in that folder because it's got the same name so if it exists we're gonna kill it meaning delete it picture path delete any older file if the picture exists we're gonna wrap that in on error go to zero because we want to wrap that in the on air just in case it doesn't exist next up we're ready to save it now active charts export file name picture path filter name jpeg so we're going to take that this right here 
I'm going to take this. We're going to save it under these conditions, saving it under the picture path. Remember, that's the picture path that we just set right here. And we're going to set the name. The type is going to be JPEG. That's good. Once we've saved it in our file, we can delete it. So now we can delete it. So if I tab over and use F8, now I can delete it. It's gone. So good. So now we're ready to clean things up. But the first thing I want to do is make sure that that file name goes right in here. In this case, I want to set the thumbnail name right here. So we can do that with this line of code. Sheet for F in the file row value equals job number underscore pick underscore file name object. So as soon as we tab through that, it's going to add it right in here because we need to know now that we've created it. Next up, we're ready to clean up. I want to make sure that I delete the chart. I want to delete the object and we need to clear any shapes so we can do that with this line of code. The object delete. So that's going to delete that object. We want to make sure that we're ready for the next one. Set object chart to nothing. And on there, uh, if there's this thumbnail picture here, I want to delete that. So that can do that. And on there, resume next, just in case we have. And then uh, just any object file, I want to go through it one more time just to make sure that's up. And then application cut copy mode false. This is going to make sure to clear the clipboard. That's it. Now we're ready for the next file row. Of course, there are no more files. But that is it. It's not that difficult of a code. It's actually relatively simple, but the order was kind of difficult. It did take me a while because one of the tricky things that I that I found out just so you know is the calculate. Simple, it doesn't seem like it, but this calculate, because without that calculate, I was getting incorrect images. And I thought, well, why am I getting incorrect images? It's because the formula was the objects were being saved from the previous time. But as soon as I used calculate, it would calculate the exact right. Even though I haven't stopped automatic calculations, I haven't stopped them. But still, calculating was critical in that. So make sure you have that because that's going to update any pictures because they're all based on formula. So that works. So now we have our now we have all of our images correctly in our folder. And if you look in our folder here, let's pull up our folder. We have all the images here. Now based on job number. Okay, so we understand how to create them, but how do we get these really cool and how do we refresh refresh the thumbnails to get all these in here? And based on the job number, as soon as we change, it's gonna update those thumbnails. How do we get those thumbnails and how do we get it so that we could just click on it and it opens up? I'm gonna go through that for you right now. Okay, so basically again, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going through our attachments, looking in this entire table, determining which attachments or which files are based on a specific job number running an advanced filter using the criteria here, having the results of that, all the attachments only for that specific job come here, taking these, bringing them into the job details, at least up to 15, we set a max of 15, and then displaying them right here. So I'm gonna walk you through the macro that does just that. So we go back into our VBA here and we look under job macros. If we go down and scroll down, we have a macro called job load files. Job, that's exactly what I want. First thing I wanna do is I wanna run the macro, the one that I just went through. I wanna make sure that all of the thumbnails have been generated. So all we're gonna really do is make sure that there's no blank th empty thumbnails here. I wanna make sure of that. So nothing's empty there, so that's important. So the next thing that I want to do is I wanted to mention the last row. Again, we need to run advanced filters, so of course I need to know the last row, in this case 31. And and I also need to know the last results row. In this case, it would be 11, but I need to run through these, so we need to know the last row. So we dimension those as long. Next up, the thumbnail row, the thumbnail column, and the last thumbnail row. What is that? Well, basically, what I want to do is I also want to run through these. When I generate these thumbnails, I have to loop through all of the thumbnails for this job, and I also have to loop through all the columns. This would be column one, column two, three, four, five, and then the rows. In this case, we're going to go three, actually three different rows, one, two, and three, if we have a lot of them. So we need to loop through them. We're going to show up to 15 thumbnails here. So we want to make sure that when we keep track of all the rows and all the columns as we display this thumbnail grid. So we got to do that. All right, so the thumbnail row, the thumbnail column, the last thumbnail row, and the, the thumbnail, the number of thumbnails, we need to keep track of which one we're on. In this case, there would be just nine, but I want to keep track of all the ones that we're going because we have to do that. All right, so continuing on the thumbnail path, of course, if we're going to open it up, we need to know the path, and I need to know the thumbnail shape as a shape. So the first thing I want to do with sheet four, I want to get the last row. Why sheet four? Because I want to know, I want to run the advanced filter, so I need to know the last row. 
in this case it's going to be 31. So we're going to use column A because that's always going to contain a value. In this case, we're going to use the job number. So we run that and we run our advanced filter. We've been up advanced filter so many times. A2 is the header row. We want to make sure that there's actually data in case there's no data. We can skip that. A2 is the header row. G is the last column here. So we're going to run through that advanced filter based on the last row here. We're going to run it and it's an advanced filter. Then we're going to want to copy that. I don't want to filter it in place. I actually want to copy the scenario and use criteria. Our criteria is K2 through K3. Very simple. Make sure to include the, he the header and then the value for the criteria K2 to K3. Then we're going to copy it over to M2 all the way through S2. And that's just going to give us our results based on the job number. Very simple. Copy to range. Let's scroll that over here so you can see it. Copy to range M2. Copy to range M2 through S2. And we want unique records as true. So this creates our advanced filter. The next thing I do, I want to run a check. If our get our last row, but in this case it's 11. But if it's less than three, we need to exit out. That means there is no results, no files for that specific job. So we can exit out of it. So we can do that with these lines of code. Let's bring this out so we can see it a little bit better and we can see all the code as we need to. So the last results row using M999 up. If the last results row is less than, I should say less than three, then go to no data. So if the last results row is greater than 17, then the last results row equals 17. Why is that? Because I want to set the max to 15 files because on our job details here, we only have space for 15. I just kind of put it, you can set your own limits to whatever you like, but I just put it as 15 because I want it to fit nicely in the screen here and it pretty much does here. Okay, so we got, so in case it's 17, why 17? Because our last attachment starts on row three. So if we scroll all the way down, we go to 17, we see that this is a total of 15 rows. So if it's 17, that means 15. So we're gonna set the last, so that means we're not gonna, no matter how many results come, we're, all, we're gonna set the max at row 17, because I can't bring in more data than that here. So we want to set the maximum as well. The last thumbnail row equals the last results row plus 11. Why is that? The last thumbnail row is plus 11. Our last row here, our first row starts on 14. Our first row here starts on three. So I need to increase it by 11 to do that because I want to keep track of both. I want to keep track of our, the thumbnails that we're putting in here and I want to keep track of the results here. So I need both rows. I need to keep track of you know row three all the way to row 11 and I also need to keep track of rows 14 all the way through 22. And But the last row here is 22. The last row here is 11, so we know we can just add 11. All we need to do is add 11. So we do that in the code right here. Last thumbnail row. Next up, what I want to do is I basically want to copy over the information. I can do that in just two different lines of code. D14 through F and the last thumbnail row equals N3 through P. And all we're doing in there is copying over the file name, the added on the type. So we're going to copy three columns. Why not copy everything? Because this is a merge cell. So it's actually not a merge cell. It's actually two different columns. So I can't copy everything over because this column wouldn't match up. There's nothing in here. So we're going to at least copy the first three, right? Bring them the first three over directly from the first three here actually right here not the job number the first three here and then what we can do is we can then copy over the thumbnail and the rows here as well thumbnail here and then i guess we could copy over the rows but we didn't i didn't bring over the rows but if we use remove file we're going to probably need to do that that's maybe in a future version but i don't think i think we're set on this one but at least you see how you can do remove file all you need to do is bring over the rows here okay so next up in our code so we're, then the next up we're going to copy over the thumbnails all that is, is a single column from from r into g from r into g bringing it right in here right here so i'm going to bring so now that we have those values we're ready to go now we're ready to load the thumbnails so with sheet one now we're focused on sheet one first thing i want to do is i want to remove any old thumbnails now if you look carefully here each thumbnail has a let's cancel that each thumbnail has a specific name this one says thumb pick 15 this one says thumb pick 16 this one says thumb pick 17 so basically they're all based on the row here and the word so i 
give them each one of the unique name, but they all start with thumb pick. So, but if I want to clear these out, all I need to do is clear out all the shapes that have th the word thumb pick in them. We don't want to make sure to clear all the shapes because I don't want to clear these buttons, right? I don't want to clear this icon. I only want to clear the shapes that start with or contain thumb pick which all these do because I've set them specific names. So when we refresh, we want to make sure we clear all the old ones. We can do that with these lines of code. For each thumb shape in shapes, again, we're focused on sheet one now, sheet one shapes. If the in string thumb shape name, if the name of the shape contains thumb pick, that means greater than zero, means contains this, then delete it. So this way it's only going to delete shapes that have these words in it. Of course, there can be any number after them, but as long as it contains this text, it's gonna be deleted. That's how we clear it out. So we're gonna go through this entire loop and just do that right there. That's gonna clear all the shapes because if I'm reloading all the thumbnails, I wanna make sure to clear any thumbnails out that were previously. Okay, the first thing I wanna set, I wanna set the thumbnail column to 10 and set the thumbnail row to four. Why is that? That's our initial setup. Because right here, this first cell right here, this is column J, this is column 10, and row four. So our first thumbnail, in this case is this page here, is going to go in column 10 and it's going to go in row four. Next up, all then all I wanna do is increase the column to put the next one, increase the column, increase the column, and as soon as we've increased it to column 13, then we, we or 14 actually, then we're gonna go to the next row, and the next row is not actually gonna be row five, because I don't wanna place it. So the next row, I think we're gonna be adding nine, and the next row goes on 12 or eight or something like that. I'll check in the code. Okay, so actually we are adding eight, eight here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get set our initial starting thumbnail column and our initial starting thumbnail row because that's gonna place where we can help us, where we're gonna place our first thumbnail. So we're gonna, now we're ready to do a loop. Four thumbnail equals 14 to the last thumb row. Remember, we've already set the last thumbnail row. In this case, it's 22 because we added 11. So we're gonna start at 14 and go to 22 because all I'm gonna do is look for a file here and I'm gonna add the file and I'm gonna take create a picture and place it right inside this grid here. So we can do that with the following lines of code. If G in thumbnail doesn't equal empty, then the thumbnail exists. G is critical, right? We need to have a name here. If we don't have a name, we can't load it. Name, we know the folder, we know where it exists, but we certainly need the name, that's important. So we, the first thing we wanna do is make sure that G actually contains a thumbnail. And so we can set the path. Now the path of the thumbnail is of course, this workbook, remember, we know the workbook, we know the folder, we've created the folder of thumbnails, and then we know the name of it because it's this thumbnail located in G. That means we have the full path of the thumbnail. So as long as we have the full path, we can actually open it. If in case there's an error, we can go to the next picture. We're ready to insert the picture. So we can do that with this, dot pictures, meaning with sheet one. Insert, it's gonna insert a picture. What are we gonna insert? We're gonna insert this full path of the picture. We're gonna also set, so we can do both. We can insert it and we can set a name with a single line of code. Now I want each thumbnail to have a different name because I wouldn't want to get confused. So we can do that. They all start out with thumbnail picture, but then we're gonna add a number onto it. What number are we adding? We're gonna add the thumbnail number. Remember the thumbnail numbers, 14, 15, 16, or 17, they all have a different number attached to it right? In this case, it's 15. In this case, it's 16 and so on. This first one, it always starts at 14. I have to hold down the control because if I just click on it, it's going to open it. So I want to hold down the control. So the first one's going to start at 14 and then they're going to go. And of course, the last one is here going to be at 22. The last one, they coincide with the rows that they're placed on. All right, so we understand that we're inserting the picture. We've inserted it, but we haven't placed it anywhere. We haven't sized it anyway. So we really don't need to size it because they've been sized previously. With shapes, thumbnail picture, and thumbnail, now I need to place it. Where am I placing it? I'm placing it to the left of the thumbnail row and the thumbnail column. These are variables that are gonna change as we move and increase our grid on our thumbnails. So we're gonna place it on the top, but I don't want it exactly on the left, I don't want it exactly on the top. So I'm gonna move it a little bit to the right, three pixels, and I'm gonna move it a little bit down from the top, three pixels, and then I wanna make sure it's visible. That is gonna place our picture. Next up, I wanna add a hyperlink. I wanna add some functionality. I don't just wanna have a picture. I wanna be able to click on it and have it open up. Regardless of the file type, if it's Word, I wanna have it open up. So I can do that with just this line of code by adding a hyperlink onto it. So how do we do that? Well, we do that with the following lines of code. 
hyperlinks based on the sheet, right? We're already set the sheet, so it's dot hyperlinks. Add, what are we adding? We're adding sheet one shapes thumbnail pick. We're adding this shape, right? We're adding a hyperlink to what? What are we adding it? We're adding a hyperlink to the shape. So the first part of the ad is what are we adding the hyperlink? So we're going to add it to this shape here. Now what is the hyperlink that we're adding? We're adding it based on Q and the thumbnail minus 11. What is that? Well, notice that I didn't bring in the full file path, right? I only have the thumbnail. I don't have the full file path. If we're going to open something, I need the full file path. Where's the located? Well, that's located here. So it's located in column Q. We know if this is row three, we know if this is row 14, right? We know that the full file path is going to be located here in G, Q, Q and row three. So we have to subtract 11 to get this. Basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to look back at the results and pull this full file path out. I want to assign the hyperlink to it. So that's important. If we right click here and we click edit hyperlink, we see that we have the full file path here. Here's the path here. That's what I'm adding, right? But I'm doing it through VBA. So we can do that with sheet 4Q, the thumbnail, num thumbnail number minus 11. That's going to get us the full file path. And next up, I'm going to add a little bit of a text called click to open. What is that text? Well, when I hover over something, it's going to give us that click to open, just so we know, so the user knows click to open. You can put anything you want, of course, in there. So, all right, now we have added our hyperlink. So now when the user clicks on it, it's going to open the application. Next up, I want to increment the rows. I need to increment the column and or the rows. So if the thumbnail column equals 14 on the last column, why? Why are we doing that? Well, again, because we're going, this is column 10, this is column 11, 12, 13, 14. So as soon as we get to 14, we got to drop it down to the next row. In this case, not really the next row, but I want to increase the rows by probably eight, right? And then go again, then reset it, then reset the column back to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then go again down 10. So we need to do that, but we can do that with this code here. If the thumbnail column equals 14, then that means that row is full. We're going to reset the thumbnail column to 10, but increase the thumbnail rows 8. So that's going to give us space to put our grid in, to put our next row of thumbnails. Okay, else, but what if it's not 14? Else, all I need to do is increase the column by 1. What, why would it not be 14? Well, in this case, it's 10. In this case, it's 11. So all we need to do is keep increasing and moving it over to the right until we reach the last. Then we're going to reset it, go back to column 10, but increase the rows. And we can do that oh, up to 15 pictures, up to 15 little thumbnails, five across, three down. So that's how we build our grid using that. So this helps us keep track of all our rows. Then I'll, then next pick, then next thumbnail. So all we're going to do is loop through all of the thumbnails from 14 to the last thumbnail row. That is how we create our grid. We don't need to size the pictures because they've already been sized. All we really need to do is place them. And that way, when we load our job, we load it, it's going to create automatically. So that is all we have to do to create thumbnails, clickable thumbnails on any type of a file, including, of course, Word, PDF, Excel, and pictures, of course. And pictures, we can have any type of picture. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this training. Please go ahead and subscribe. And of course, if you want to support us, I really would appreciate. Love seeing you here. Thanks so much for your comments. Of course, if you want, please join our Excel for Freelancers group. Happy to help answer your questions. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.